Well, Mark, here we are again. After you put together the blue car last year for Bring a Trailer, and you've been a busy little bee. Uh, you've got a couple out here that demonstrate uh, the fruits of your labors. And how long has it been since you finished the blue car? Blue car got finished though approximately two years ago. Okay. And since then, there's been a lot going on in the uh, Kininger shop. Talk to us about what you've been doing. Well, I picked this up from a customer uh, towards the, the end of my blue car build and decided it was a good candidate for a GT2 clone. And as you were doing that, what's behind you? Well, that's my bread and butter back there. Uh, I'm uh, on my third one now. Uh, it's an RSR clone on a uh, G-body chassis with a 3.6 turbo brakes, and uh, that's, uh, that's what pays the bills. And that was a custom build for a customer? Yes, it was. Okay, and this one, right here that we're going to bring to the uh, trailer community. Talk to us. Uh, how did you find it? And what started the gears turning for a GT2? I've worked on this thing for probably 15 years. And the last 10 years, every time it would come in for service work, I looked at it and said, man, that would sure make a good GT2 clone. And there's no arguing that. What did uh, what you have to do to it? Well, since it was a track car for 10 years, uh, very lightly used for DE, uh, driven by an older gentleman, um, basically took the car all apart, uh, did the fenders on it, GT2 style fenders and bodywork, uh, had the car fully repainted, door jams and everything, uh, painted with the doors off, and uh, still the same original color, Arctic Silver. What was the hardest part about this build? Initially, it was uh, not quite knowing how to cut the fenders properly for the GT2 fenders, and uh, uh, fortunately, I have a customer car that's a, uh, a factory GT2, and he loaned it to me for a weekend to shoot about 100 pictures of uh, how that thing was built, uh, underside and everything. So I was able to duplicate the way the factory cut the fenders and, uh, and some of their details. All right, what about the motor? Motor, uh, it was getting a little tired, uh, so uh, pulled the top end and uh, did basically a top end job with head work and cams. Once it went back in, uh, it got a remap from Protomotive. Uh, it's got a, a pump gas tune in it, uh, a boost controller uh, that uh, I run about 12 pounds of boost through the car on pump gas. Uh, it'll still do 14 or 15 and be safe, but uh, I can be extra safe and it makes plenty of power already. Did you dyno it? I did dyno it. Uh, it put down 420 to the wheels at 12.8 pounds of boost. So there's still a little more room there for uh, probably pushing 550 if, uh, if we kick it up to 15 or 16 pounds. Uh, Mark, you've been featured in Excellence before, and I rumor has it they reached out to you for this one. Well, there is a, a magazine that did a photo shoot on it. Uh, can't really say, but uh, it's coming out in the next couple of months. What about the suspension? Suspension already had many upgrades, a lot of them for safety. Uh, it does have the Bilstein uh, PSS-9s on it. Uh, and then uh, the rear suspension, uh, I replaced everything over the years with uh, monoball pieces from Renline. So it's all metal on metal pivots back there. 
Does it make any noise when you're driving down the road with that metal on metal? No, oh, it's pretty darn quiet. Uh, How'd you achieve that? Uh, making sure that all the bushings were in good shape. It's only when they get loose that they start making noise, but uh, when they're still fairly new and nice and tight, uh, the thing can be pretty much silent. Okay, the interior, what'd you do to the interior? Well, I tried to copy my customer GT2 as much as possible uh, because they come with an RS America style interior where it's lightweight door panels, and they use Recaro seats. Uh, and I also welded up the sunroof on it. Do you know how much the car weighs? Car's been on the scales and corner balanced uh, with no driver in it and quarter tank of gas, it weighs 3,000 pounds. What do you think you'd do on the quarter mile? You know, with 500 horse at the motor, it's probably a solid 11 second car in the quarter mile, uh, but uh, that's, that's abusing the clutch to get it off the line quick. Uh, I'd say a rolling start, easily a 12. Uh, I got to drive this car this morning, and when I asked Mark what kind of transmission it had in it, he said it's going to be the kind that'll spoil you forever. Talk to me about the tranny. So, tranny was actually rebuilt by G-Box about 4,000 miles ago, and uh, it was done for the previous owner. Uh, and that thing came out shifting like a knife through butter. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the slickest shifting trannies that Porsche ever put in one of these cars. And I'll attest to that. The condition of uh, the linkage and everything uh, in the transmission, and did you note any discrepancies? Well, uh, I do my normal shim up uh, trick on the, the one rod that uh, has a rubber joint in it. So uh, shim that thing tighter. And uh, other than that, it's the stock shifter. Uh, I'm plenty happy with the way it feels. And uh, the stock shifter kind of ensures that you're not gonna accidentally throw it into first instead of third at, you know, 80 miles an hour. Right, that would be a bad day. Uh, you picked some unique wheels for this car. Talk to me about the Forge Lines. Forge Lines, they've got a choice of 20 finishes for their wheels and uh, I like this color because it's a nice contrast for the car. It's a powder coated semi-transparent finish and uh, it helps hide the brake dust. Uh, and it's their forged aluminum centers, a uh, true three-piece wheel. Did the, uh, the brake system on it, is it uh, standard for a turbo? It's standard for a turbo and also standard for a GT2. So uh, it's kind of nice that uh, all I had to do was basically refinish the calipers. Uh, I put some Porterfield pads in it that are kind of street friendly and are pretty quiet. Right on. The, are there any other suspension modifications uh, from a, a stock turbo that you perform? It's got TRG adjustable sway bars, which are actually the, the cup car stuff from the 90s. Uh, so they're factory big sway bars. Uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's lowered and aligned. Uh, it's a little heavy on the camber, but it works good with the uh, sticky tires. Okay, have you had it out on the track since you rebuilt it? Nope, uh, track days are over. Okay, what do you think uh, a future buyer would like best about this? Well, the fact that it's a solid turnkey, nice driving car that feels like something the factory would have built. And uh, it's got probably 2,000 uh, shakedown miles on it now with the new motor and uses almost no oil, uh, maybe a half a quart in a thousand miles at the most. And uh, you know, it's a uh, been a real good car for me.
Does the ducting in the rear wing serve any purpose? It's actually functional. It pumps cold air into that engine compartment and allows me to run a, a big free flowing air filter. So the, uh, the engine seems to, well, come alive isn't, uh, doesn't quite explain it. Can you talk to me about the power band? Well, the cams that I put in it uh, really wake up at about 4,000 RPMs, which is right about when the turbos do also. So everything's coming on at the same time. And uh, they, uh, they will basically pull an extra 500 RPMs uh, on the peak power before it starts to nose over. Even on the dyno, it peaked out at 6,500 at four, uh, 420 wheel horsepower and was still building power when uh, the guy lifted. It smogged uh, previously and uh, was a piece of cake. Talk to me about this front splitter. The, uh, the front bumper is Porsche GT2 and the splitters came from FVD who uh, sourced them from the original builder of the, the factory splitters. Any problems with uh, mounting locations as it, as it uh, compared to stock? You know, this, these things slid into that bumper and fit exactly the way you see it the first time with no mods. No mods. No mods to get these to fit. Real high quality fiberglass from uh, FBD. Oh, were there any suppliers that you use uh, that you felt really went over and above? Well, Terrett Engineering's always been real good to work with and uh, his parts are high quality. Uh, it's got some uh, Terrett front camber plates on it and uh, they sell me a lot of parts for my cars. Right. Talk to me about the paint shop that you use. Well, I use a collision shop and uh, they, uh, they can do very good, high quality work. Uh, I just have to be patient with them and give them three to six months to do the car. Uh, they kind of do it as a back burner job when they, they get slow on collision work. And he's done probably 15 cars for me over a 20 year period and uh, had the same painter the whole time. So you're able to achieve consistent results from this shop? Oh yeah, I know what to expect. And if you were to grade this paint job on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate it? Well, I would say a nine out of 10 because 10 out of 10 practically doesn't exist uh, in most people's eyes, but uh, it's a very high quality repaint. And when I bought the car from the customer, it had all original paint and doors and fender on it. So the gaps were good when I got it. And uh, there was no Bondo in the car. And so the sunroof uh, weld and replacement, looks like you're getting pretty good at that. Yeah, I've actually got a, a hot rod guy in El Cajon that makes up the panel for each car and TIG welds them in place. Uh, he can do it, that with minimal warping. And even once they're in the car, he goes back and does metal finishing on them and uh, gets them so straight they need almost no filler. Are the window seals original? The, actually the front windshield is new and uh, the rest of the windows and the quarter glass, they're original. Um, the rear seal is actually a glue-in. There's little or no wind noise out of this car. I hate to say zero because even the mirror can make some wind noise, but it's about as quiet as they get. Do you have any clear film protection on the car? Yeah, I do. Uh, where's your clear film protection? It's on the rear quarters and the, uh, the rocker panels, basically the kill zones. Let me 
show, let's, why don't we show the front trunk? So I need to disclose <laughs> some patchwork. So up here, it's basically original front trunk. However, it did have an additional oil cooler on the driver's side at uh, one point during its uh, track day life. Um, those holes have been filled in where the oil lines ran through inside the trunk. trunk. And where would that be? Just ahead of this harness. Okay, so we're, we're looking at uh, this area. That patchwork, yeah. Okay. And that would be the extent of any metal? Any body uh, mods that uh, really had to be done uh, to undo some of the track use history. Uh, other than that, the frame rails are straight and virgin up here. Um, no signs of trauma. New battery? New battery. Titanium Advantage strut brace also. 